this is where we see the large orange light. Mm, that's right, yes, we did. Yes, on their left. On the left here. Yes. And then... then it disappeared, and I am coming up to it now. It appeared again here. But right. it started harboring down below the back of these trees and the hedges here. So we came on down the road for another quarter of a mile, maybe a bit more. We turned sharp left to come into Chilcom Lane. It's a bad bend, isn't it? Going down this lane, and uh, we, see we, we were doing about 20 mile an hour, maybe 20, 25 mile an hour. Done about 70 yards down, all of a sudden this car suddenly went crazy. It just leapt off the road to the right, and the engine started to rev. We hit the grass verge, which is a very wide grass verge, about 15 yards wide. And we were heading towards a high edge. So I grabbed the steering wheel as Mrs. Bowles was fighting with it. And suddenly the car straightened itself. We came down the grass verge for about 10 to 15 yards. And we came to a stop. And it was though we hit an invisible barrier, which did it, it gave because it didn't throw me forward into the seat, but it gave and then brought us back to our normal stopping position. That was when we see... Well, then the... Sorry, yes. That was when we see what I shall say, a cigar-shaped object hovering in front of us. Inside were three figures. Yes, they had it like a cockpit in the, the, the cabin, was in the, the front of the cigar-shaped thing. Uh, and was uh, lit up, but um, not glowingly lit up. It was a very easy light to look at. It was hovering. It had either steam or vapour coming out like, gla like gas jets. Then I see one of these figures get out of this thing, this yes. object, and yes. it started walking across towards me. Yes, it was. Now, as it was walking across towards me, I heard a whistle. Which I didn't so hear. It's like a... A whistling kettle starting to whistle. Now he had on like a boiler suit, but it was with a polar neck collar. He had a seam down on his right hand side. As he walked across, he came to my window. He put his arm on the roof of my car and looked in. Now he was a tall man, roughly six foot one, six foot two. He had pink eyes, which were very piercing. He had sideboards and a beard which met. He looked in at me, then he looked at Ted. After looking at Ted, he looked at my dashboard. And as he was looking at the dashboard, my car engine started up. Now the car ignition keys was turned off. And as the engine started up of my car, my lights were my headlights were four times powerful than what they normally are. Which was it was just like a glow of white. I see a movement of this figure. Oh, by the way, I grabbed Ted. And I said, no, Ted, don't get out, don't get out, because he wanted to get out. And I just literally wrapped my body around Ted. And then I opened one eye, because I'd had my eyes shut. And I opened one eye, and I said, look out, Ted, he's going round the back to you. I see a movement, thinking he was going round the right, all the way round my car. Ted looked over his left hand and shoulder, to have a look around to see if he was coming round. And my words were, don't open the door, Ted, don't open the door. But while Ted was looking round and me huddled to him with my eyes closed, the figure disappeared with the object. After starting, after it gone, after a few seconds, which seemed hours to us, I started, Ted said, well, let's go. Oh, he asked me if he could drive. And I said, not likely. It only meant because it meant me getting out of my car. I put it in first and started off, but we could not move. It was as though as we were still hitting an invisible barrier. Well, I put her back in neutral and waited for a few seconds, and then I started off again. And we went off perfectly normal in the car. On the Monday, when I got up, I had a rash on my face, down my neck, and on, along onto my shoulder. Which side? on the right hand side it was all like blotchy it could have been a nerve, nerve rash or it could have been where that gentleman was stood by my window incidentally since this happening i have had a telephone call from a person from london 
telling me on no account am I to say anything to anyone about this, what we've seen, because I should be having a government official come round to see me. And after all, this is England and this is a free country and I will speak and say what I want, which is the truth. 